Sam. What's up, everybody? Thank y'all for tuning in. I'm finally on Whiskey Sour, and I'm so honored because it took me it took me two years to get on this show, and it's crazy that we're finally here now, but praise God, we're here. Amen. It has not been two years, bro. It's been like... Okay, Sarah gonna... and I weren't even married when I first <laughs> found out about it. It was crazy, you know. And you want to know something for real? Is that actually um, collaborating when you like being on like zooming and stuff? Like it kind of. I was really afraid to like do something on my own. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I did something with my best friend. I did you know a show with my sister, and I was like, you know what? This there's still a calling on my heart. Amen. And so when I was like, I was like, I could do this. So after being on, on you know, Zoom and stuff, I was like, Tia's was really good at this. And it, you were the inspiration behind this. And this oh, well, is thank not, you. I'm not trying to yank your chain and just like butter you up because it's, it's it's been a process and I'm really nervous today. I'm really, and I don't, I don't really get nervous. Well, I, I am, I am, I'm very honored. I appreciate it. Um, you know, this is, this is, I'm glad to be an inspiration to anyone. And I'm always willing to help when, when and where I can. So, I yeah. thank you. Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Whiskey Sour Libations and Conversations. I am your host Dom, and I have my great friend to hear more with me today. A what friend up? that my sister has been hiding from me for a long time because I've been here. Yo, my sister is over there, by the way. So I wanted her to know that. I want. I want to like tell hiding. everybody because she's probably not gonna get on camera. Dom's sister. <laughs> Was my seventh grade girlfriend for three days. <laughs> you brought this heifer in my house. <laughs> you didn't tell me all that. You tell that story, but you don't tell them how I inspired your entire career. Oh, okay. Let me let me finish the story first. Let me finish the story first. Oh my gosh. First of all, I don't I don't know how she inspired my whole career. Maybe it's she thinking how I bounced back and I made jokes out of it, but she broke up with me through somebody else. But this was the age before text, so she <laughs> she said somebody else is that hey, Danielle don't want to go with you no more. It's over. <laughs> That's how I got dumped. Damn. <laughs> you don't recall? I don't recall. Janelle, I ain't gonna go through this shit with you. <laughs> but anyway, Janelle is here, guys. Um, yeah, um, and and we've been having a good time. You're gonna have a great time. Okay, so wait, since you know inspired your career, what happened? Hold on, you can't say that and then not say nothing. Uh I don't know why. You know, how did you inspire my whole career? So <laughs> Ooh, we got a story. <laughs> now you they ain't gonna be able to come hear that. Now. You got you have to come over. You gotta come here. over yeah. here. You have to come over this here. It's a family affair. Fairness here, great. Keisha e is here, y'all. Yeah, I'll let you get this fuck because I'm it, this is gonna be a great time tonight. We drunk, by the way. <laughs> I, I didn't really drink no water, and I had a meal. I'm fucked where, up. where are we supposed to look? look okay, I, I don't be on camera. camera. Okay. To the camera. So, what had happened was, in seventh grade, we were putting on a stage play of The Wizard of Oz. I was supposed to be Dorothy. Mm -hmm. I said, A, to here. I did not say to here, but mm. hey, to here, you should be in this play. And you was like, okay, so he was the tin man. I was scared, so I dropped out. Mm -hmm. But you stayed in, and mm. you did an amazing job. And Thank ever you. since then, you've been on the stage. Wow, that's all. Okay, had I not asked you to come mm -hmm. be with me, and mm -hmm. then I left you hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You would you would you might you may not have been where you are today. Very Just you know, planted Lord. the seed. Okay. You know. All right. The all word right. of God is like a little bitty seed. Gotcha. Scattered all around. Gotcha. Get your all right. Okay. All right. And that's, so that's what happened. Like that. that why you joking? Like I was like, "Give me some oil," and then he hit me with the oil. <laughs> and then my boy, oil, yeah, my boy Jermaine was on the keys, and I was like, "Da da da," and I was pop yeah. to it. I got five on it, and that was my yeah. intro on the scene. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. See, we told y'all this was gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> I inspired your whole pack. <laughs> 
I guess not. Oh my God. She's right. If it were, if I hadn't done the Wizard of Oz, I would have ended up selling dope. I would have never met a fan. I would have got arrested. Might have died in that fire. Might have died in the fire. You know what I'm saying? That's weird. <sighs> okay, so okay, so the other day we were on live mm-hmm. uh, and we were talking about um, getting the fuck out of St. Louis. Yes. <laughs> so I want I want to know like what were things that inspired you? Like how did you know that you wanted to be a comedian outside of what Janelle was saying? Um, uh, and, and what led you to LA? Because you could have picked Atlanta, Chicago, New York. So how did you end up here in LA? You know it's crazy. I tried those cities first. Oh wow! I tried I tried Atlanta right after I filmed MTV's Your Mama. And, okay. Okay. Uh, Name drop. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I kind of like this. I kind of I kind of vibe with it. And plus, I was just ready to, to change my scene in St. Louis. Okay. So I went down to Atlanta. Uh, I looked at a place in Silver Springs, a uh, Sandy Springs, Sandy Springs. I think it's Sandy Springs. I don't know. Yeah. I ain't never been to Atlanta. It's like it's like it's like the county, okay. right? Okay. So okay. it's like okay. north. And um, I don't know, man. When I was down there, it just it, it wasn't the Atlanta that it is now. That it's like this melting pot of arts and creativity, and like all my homies have podcasts. At that time, it was Atlanta. Home of the strip clubs, clubs, and Lennox Mall. Like Lennox Mall was the thing. So it didn't it didn't leave a lot of options as far as creativity, I felt like. And I felt like I would have just stayed down there and got a couple of people pregnant. That's not like Atlanta today, though, still. So. But you still got options now. You got more outlets. You got like, you know what I'm saying? The homies at 85 South, the homies over at uh, More Than Culture, uh, okay. a, a, a ton of uh, comedic like outlets and things like that. Back then, I just I didn't feel like I had that, okay. and I maybe should have stayed a little longer. But okay. I feel like I made the right decision when I when I went to New York to try to stay there because I was staying in Jersey City, like okay. right downstairs, right downtown by the path is like Dunkin' Donuts. And when I was going into New York, even early in the morning, like five or six o'clock in the morning, it didn't feel like five or six o'clock in the morning. It okay. felt like two p.m. Okay, like okay. that was okay. never a time when it wasn't the hustle and bustle. Yeah. And that's what I didn't like about it. I was like, I, I like something that just, I don't know, it just feels like, it feels like you're existing in New York. It doesn't really yes. feel like you're living unless you're like doing certain activities and stuff like that. But like just the high was always on. I don't know. So the first time I came to Cali, I was coming out here for an event with Truth. And um, I hadn't even got off the plane yet. It was my first time in LA. Okay. And I was literally leaving the the the, the, the opening, the jetway, of the plane, um, Future Lodge is what they call it, and walking into the, the jetway, and the sun just beamed down on my face, and I was like, I'm moving here. Mm. I didn't know who I was going to stay with. I ain't had no family out here, no friends, nothing like that, but it was just the way the sun hit me in that moment. I was like, I'm moving here. Okay. And uh, the guy I was on tour with at the time, we ended up uh, just just clicking very well during that tour, and he had just graduated from UCLA. And he was about to move out of his people's house, so we found a place. After the tour was over, I came out here for two weeks, Okay. We found a place, and I went back home. My stuff was already packed up in storage because I was subletting my apartment. Found a moving company. I was gone within a week. Oh damn! I was playing no games. I knew in the eighth grade that I was gonna move here. Really? That yeah. that early? That early. So because that... the cocaine was good, or what? <laughs> like, how did you? That's just weird. No, like okay, eighth grade. So, like eighth grade. So that summer, that year, we had came out here uh, for a person formerly known as my cousin's graduation, right? <laughs> And so we came out. Wait a second, you don't want to unpack that? You just want to glaze over the person formerly known as my cousin. That everybody's okay with that. Everybody in here, people in the comments, are you guys okay with that? I don't, I don't know. I I feel like we just glazed over that. I just wanted to make sure everybody was okay with that, us glazing over that. Sometimes I'll just leave it short and sweet. Sometimes people are jealous of you, and you never understand why, and it's just that, and they create false narratives. And try to sell that to people about you, and it's not true. And I think a lot of times, like I moved out to LA, I was, and I tell people my journey out here has was very predestined, predetermined. Mm-hmm. I came out here, I had a job already. All right, come on, Jesus. Uh, I had a place to stay. I mm-hmm. thought I was gonna be right. I'm still messing oh, up underwear. This is the cousin yeah. Yeah. with the dad that yeah. okay, I know what you're saying. But yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, you know. She was in the cast of sales, Janelle. I have to say, I was missing a pair of drawers one day, and I don't know what she did. And I was like, "So you know, if you would have, here's the thing: you find them drawers, burn them because you put yeah, them on, you're gonna get pregnant." I, <laughs> she put a pregnant, she put a pregnant spell on them drawers. You know what? But so, so that summer we came out here, 
uh, well, it wasn't summer, but it was like spring, whatever. And just the air was different. And then we also went to New York mm -hmm. with the puppet ministry. I don't know if I told you I have a head of talent. My sister and I, we know puppetry. Wait and a second. How the fuck <laughs> did I never know this? Yes. CP was on Zooming with the homies and all of this shit. And you never once hit me on the side no. like, you know I do puppetry. Yeah, so CP knows. You a puppeteer? Yeah, CP knows that I'm a puppeteer. Nigga! So if CP and I Oh, have a new show coming. Now, yeah. I don't know what it's called yet, but we get some goddamn puppets on, on <laughs> YouTube.com slash to hear call. more. This is belly button high. This oh, nigga, we finna go crazy. I'm not buying my words. Yeah. Some people, like, certain people, they be like this. No, it's supposed to be like this. We are <laughs> we are doing something with some goddamn puppets. Yeah, so um, yeah. that's so we went lit. On a trip. Uh I think it was the pray, I think it was our praise trip. Mm -hmm. And so uh we went to New York and I remember we went to go see J Lo, but then we got chased by this rat at Coney Island. And it was sweaty and hot like St. Louis. The sweat? I mean, the, the rat was sweaty and hot? No, no. Oh, was nigga. Also I was like, how big was the rat? The rat was the size of a cat. Okay, that's about yeah, regular. So that's about I regular. I was like, I don't under, I, I hate it here. I don't need to live here. Right. And I I even thought, like, at one point, I felt like I was getting burnt out on LA recently uh, before the pandemic, and I went to New York. And I was like, maybe I'll feel something different. Nope. Yeah. I didn't feel nothing different. I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be. I just needed a trip to reset. Yeah, sometimes you need that. That reset yeah. is that reset is very, very real, man. Um, that shit is essential. I remember when I first moved out here, I had to go home every couple of months yeah. just to get a recharge yep. because LA is draining. Yeah. Like LA is very draining in the sense of comparing yourself to others, trying to obtain this untangible dream. Um Never feeling like you're doing enough. Mm -hmm. And that type of shit can drain you if you don't have the right village around yeah. you to like build you back up. So yeah. until I was able to like farm and build the village and, and kind of curate my tribe, yeah. I had to go home to get that recharge yep. Yep. and like that that hustle motivation back in me. Now I feel like we're in a good spot where we can yep. come over each other's house and kind of get that recharge instead of having to fly 2,300 miles back home. Yeah, I didn't even know that was the mileage. Uh, it is. I drove out here the first time. Oh my gosh, no. So luckily for me, I never drove. Oh shit, like, I drove that shit. The first time I had my car, uh, no, my dad drove it to Janelle, to Janelle's in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So then I flew to Phoenix to get the car and then drove back. But that was the farthest I was driving was to Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix was my recharge. I would literally have days when I was working at Nordstrom. Shout out to the girl because those are. Those are my first friends out here, and mm -hmm. they are still some of my best friends. Like, my best friend Monica lives literally a block away from me. Like, I walk to her house. So mm -hmm. It's really dope. But I would call my A. So I'm gonna call. Is, is it cool if I, I'm gonna get off of work and I'm gonna come up there because I'm I'm just not right. And I would be in a room. I would be in a room. Like I would just sleep in my room. I would just be sleep. Just I, I felt that drain. So we we are trying to, and it, it's crazy because at first Farron wasn't like as open and, and comfortable with people being in our place. But mm -hmm. now, like we told Keisha today, like Keisha, we get, we get you a key. Cause we love the fact that we can be that for people. Cause we know what it's like to be out here and not have yeah. a family and certain friends that you can like just lean on when you need that. Yeah. So we love, we we're honored that people feel that way about our place. So yeah. um, we, we completely understand. We completely understand. It, it really does. I'm still it, waiting on my key. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the locks in the clothes today, but. But where's my key? Wait, y'all do have laundry. Where's my no? Y'all do have laundry. Yeah, we, we, we do. do. I, do. I, I, my my laundry room on my facility is a mess. So yeah, I, I'm like I got a small move. Farron Farron moves like real rich, guys. Let me be very clear. <laughs> we're not rich, okay? We're doing okay, but we're not, not rich. Wealthy. I come home and Farron got three unknown people in that house cleaning up. <laughs> She's like, oh, I forgot to tell you, I hired cleaners. Who the fuck are these people? Why are they in my office when all this cocaine is out? <laughs> I don't no. understand what's happening, but you know, she didn't want to do the deep cleaning. It's I'm not going to do it. Activities on this podcast right now because you said that you cocaine. I sell guns, apparently. Yes, Dom's is an arms dealer. So uh, you want to know what's funny was that Janelle was like, why does? 
why does the hair keep saying that? And I was like, because I'm so good. Listen, this, it, 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 it just is what it is. People would go to Dom when they needed a look. Little snub nose, three fifty or something like that. Yeah. Little, little pocket two two, something like you know. She ain't about that life now. You know what I'm saying? She she changed herself. So I'm changed. I am changing. I'm doing all that I can. In the words of Effie from <laughs> Dream Girls. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Could you move back to St. Louis comfortably? Is anything outside of family able to get you back to St. Louis? Frontenac or Clayton area. Mm -hmm. That's like the county too, guys. That's like yeah, that would be uh, like 30 45 minutes outside of the city for those that aren't familiar with it. It ain't 40, it ain't that far. No, Clayton, no, no, because Clayton oh, is Clayton, yeah. Clayton is close and, and now Frontenac. Frontenac could be far. Yeah. Uh I'm just trying to hang out there to catch a wealthy husband. <laughs> so uh <laughs> I, I would do real. it. I would I would, I wanna get to the point where like cause the idea, like, I remember when you were showing me houses last year, and I'm like, but it's not like you were in Pasadena and all these other things. I'm like, I would like to own and have something outside, mm -hmm. even if it were like a rental property yeah. or something. So when I came back to right. St. Louis, like if it were like a duplex right. or a fourplex, I had right. my place that I could just go home to. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, like when I go back, like sometimes I just leave. Like last time when I was there, um, I went there for a refresher and left feeling more drained yeah. than when I came. Um, and, and, and I mean, and that was when everything happened with food. So that was hard to process. Yeah, in absolutely. Itself. But then I like, I like, it was just a lot. It was just a lot. And I was like, damn, like this was like probably a terrible idea. <laughs> I don't know if I could ever fully move back to St. Louis. I could have a property there, but I kind of like, Especially more recently with like all the rappers getting killed in their hometown and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, St. Louis is it's 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 a love hate thing hey, because Huey liked it when he was going to his mama house. That's what I'm saying. Baby Huey yeah. the dude, he's saying uh, the rapper the saying pop, pop lock, lock and drop, drop it. it. <laughs> so many rappers are just slain in their home cities, and a lot of times you don't have to go looking for it. I yeah. mean, most recently with Dolph. He was stopping at a cookie shop. Yep, getting cookies. Huey was Huey was going to see his mom, and so St. Louis is one of those cities where you don't actually have to go looking for the trouble. It will find you. It will. And so now, when I do go to St. Louis to do shows, I never stay in the city. Yeah, I'm always in like uh, Westport okay. or, or something like that. I'm never in the city, and then I also don't go to clubs. I'm not hanging yeah. out because you realize like you can get to a certain level and you automatically become a target. target yeah. And it's not anything that you're doing. Like, cause I, you know I me, mean? I don't wear a whole lot of jury. I'm not super flashy. I ain't yeah. got a call with all these beats and all this crazy paint. I don't do that shit. I'm very low key with my shit. Yeah. And still people take notice of certain things. Yeah. I mean, I remember we were watching, say, what, it was some video that you just showed me and you was like, somebody zoomed in and saw a cut of a bandaid on your hand or something. Oh wait, was that Keisha? No, it wasn't Keisha. Um, it was Amani who saw it. Oh, but yeah, people like zoom in and be like, "Oh, like what? You got this on your? Are you okay?" They zoomed in and saw a band aid on Farron's finger, and so people would take notice of stuff like that and then make a mental note of that. And yeah. you know, like you just got to be cognizant of that type of stuff. So I can probably have a property there, go there when I need to do some work because I right. me and my sister both want to. We still want to open a funeral home in St. Louis. So hey, like that's listen, people die every day, B. Yep. And, and people are gonna always die. So that's just that's a forever business. Um, but I could never fully commit to moving back to St. Louis, I don't think. I just don't feel like I would have enough to do to feel fulfilled. Yeah, I I think it's different. Like I said, like I could I I wouldn't be opposed to I always said if I left LA, I would probably move to like DC or Texas. Mm -hmm. I can see, and, and mainly probably Houston, uh, because it's a little busier than Dallas. It's to date a, a guy in Dallas. So I would go back and forth. Flex, I just, uh, I did. I just he, had, he had too much just, baby mama uh, job for me, uh, so I was uh, like, uh, "Yeah, I got to stick to date my niggas that got kids that's close to my age." So wait a second, Dom. Let's 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 <laughs> let's break this down. Let's see what kind of guy Dom likes, guys, because. I, from what I, his thing, I've known Don for years, and I never met none of these niggas. I thought they were imaginary characters. Uh, I feel like you like a hood dude, but you also like older guys. Like what? I do. I, if they were for the you know, for the niggas that might be watching and want to shoot their shot, what does Dom look for? Ooh, so it 
it varies. It depends. Let me, let me, let me, let me oh, squeeze shit. She in. Had to get okay. Closer, so hold on. Let me take a swig. Let me think about it. She here. said, let me take a swig. She had like his beard. Jesus. Okay. So, oh, my bad. No, you fine. No, no, this, this, this is fine. This is, it's, it's not broke. This is what happens. Go. Good. It's like the size of Nelly kind of that from that video. Uh, but I would say <laughs> <laughs> I like a guy. <laughs> I, oh okay, no, you know said, what? This, I'm not doing no. This is perfect for me. Like, listen, this is not doing too much. Let's talk about it. Fuck it. We yeah, didn't brought it up we now. Did. We did. We didn't brought. We didn't brought it up it. now. We listen. Nah. Uh, okay. It's been, a, it's been a lot of dick on my coming. timeline. <laughs> it's been a whole lot of dick on my timeline. Let's talk about it. Okay. First of all, I've seen like five celebrities like mm -hmm. nudes leaked this week i don't know what's in the water i've been enjoying it for the most part except yeah. for little fizz um look here's a, okay here's a, nope. here's the thing that i want to say about a lot of these nudes first of all i don't know if little fizz is leaked because he has an only fan so, so his don't really count that right somebody just recorded it with nelly i don't know like who had access to his account i thought because nelly was first i was like oh he must have a single dropping or something he trying to Get the buzz going for the single, but if somebody is leaking nudes, videos, whatever the fuck, that is the most disrespectful invasion of trust and privacy ever. That's really number. Is. That's number one. It is. Uh, number two, I saw a lot of people coming at Nelly like, "Oh, this that dick, it ain't shit, and all of that shit." That's an average dick. It's an average dick, and sometimes everybody don't want to get fucked by Sergi Baca. No. Listen, that's an average. Listen, I know so many women that like average dick. They don't want that super big dick. Babe, do you want a super big dick? No, I do. That, like, my service, my service kind of sitting low, so I can take it every once in a while. They, don't nobody listen. Most people don't. I'm pulling up to the table with average peen, okay? Average peen, six and a half, seven when I'm all shaved. You understand me? That's what that's what you get in average peen. Now, here's the thing. All y'all women talking about, oh, it's small enough. Take take 10 to 12 inches. I guarantee you, you're pushing this hips. You're, you're trying to stop it. You're running from it. Because you're not really built like that. Stop stop faking yeah, the funk. I need y'all to go to do a conference and all get on I'm the gonna, same page. This. Like a lot of the people that are saying that probably ain't really getting fucked like that anyway. So mm -hmm. it's neither here or there. But you want to know what, what was the most alarming thing to me was people talking shit because he was moaning. And he was talking to her. I was like, nigga, when I go, when I suck dick or I'm fucking, how am I, you have to do those things. Like, sex is pleasurable. Yes. Like, so how, how is he supposed to have sex? He, y'all be having quiet sex, huh? I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a be real. I'm going to be real. Did the kids door close? Of course not. Close your door. Sorry, Kendo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I never used to, like, Makes Mom, sense. Really? Yeah, I, 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 with anything. And like, uh, me and Fran were talking to one of our friends, and she was like, I love when guys do that like that. It's yeah. that affirmation. And I've never thought about it like that. I just yeah. thought like guys ain't supposed to be, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So uh, after we had that conversation with our friend, I've been letting all the sounds out. <laughs> babe, let, babe look, you like when I make the sounds right now? Oh, yeah. I'll be like, oh, girl. Oh, no. You mean sounds? Yes. I do. Women, what the fuck okay. is wrong? Yeah, for real. I, and I, one time I was like, having sex with what's his dude? I ain't gonna say his name because I don't need y'all to go look it and search it. But I was like, is everything okay? Shut the hell up. <laughs> uh, I heard you that was, and y'all can't hear. That was actually that was that was actually fair enough. Oh, y'all damn lie. <laughs> no, it was fair. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. She well, said too late. She said, Oh, well, I Apologize. <laughs> but no, I was like, okay, what's happening? Is, is it not good today? Because I ain't hear no sounds. And I said, well, are you are you back there? Listen, <laughs> uh, people in the chat saying, I need to hear you enjoy it. That's Diana G. It's important. Or I get a complex thinking you don't like it. Yeah. Uh, Missouri said, please, please talk to me or moan in my name. Uh, because if you don't, I'm not, I'm not going to, it's not going to be the same. So, yeah, man, like we listen, man, yeah. ladies, like fellas, man. Hey, man, live your truth. Now, I do want to say this really quickly. I ain't gonna stay on it about Isaiah Rashad. Oh, I saw that too. I said that. Yeah, okay, I, I didn't send it to nobody. Let me say this. 
I don't give a fuck. Bro, I will still slap. I still will hang out with bro if we ever got the opportunity to have a drink, buddy, like that. Like, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I just feel, I feel like it's so fucked up that people are outing people like that. Like, but the reality of it is, if you saw the whole video, man, you saw, right? You saw, I, I told, I told, if you saw the whole video, it starts one way, but the way it ends, he had two people on him. That's yeah. still some player shit. So fuck all the bullshit. It don't matter straight or gay. You still, still a player. So I don't, man, get on with all that bullshit, bro. The album fire. What they he's still say, a cool. What he, what he say? Call me, call me what? Hey, Showtime. Hey, Showtime. He's like, then he was like, no, 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 no. Both of y'all say it together. <laughs> hey, Showtime. I was like, player shit. That's still some player shit. So I was like, it don't matter, bro. Like, I don't, I, I just hope that. The entertainment world doesn't like try to shun him for that shit. Um, well, you know how they are. Yeah, I do, but at the same time, it's like, bro, because I feel the fuck? like ever since Frank Ocean said he was bi or they eventually said he was gay or, mm-hmm. or something, I feel like we ain't never really heard from Frank again. Also, I mean, now, Frank yeah, is a recluse himself, though. Yeah, I mean, yes, but I feel like people really wasn't messing with him like that. Or and just look at how they did Lil Nas X. Lil Nas X is popping. I don't know. Lil Nas X is popping, but look how niggas like was so quick to like drop him when he was like, well, you know what? I was like, nigga, you don't even have to say nothing because I thought we knew. I I didn't know. I also didn't care. That's I the don't thing. Care. This, I is, don't this, care. Is, this is my biggest thing with this whole leaking news and outing people and shit like that. I'm so afraid somebody um, leaking. I'm gonna say, you know what? It's one news that I'm like, that I was like, okay, this wasn't cute. But in my other ones leak, I'd be like, you know what? I look bad. I'm, I'm right. I'm straight. Any of my news, any of my news leak, say. I'm straight. I don't care. Because when I was taking news back in the day, when I was taking news, I would always moisturize the pain before I send a picture. <laughs> so it's moisturized up, banged up, no, shining. Can I'm, I tell I'm you a good. funny news story that news that I'm afraid of. Come on. Okay. So the person that asked for it is this dude that smacked me upside my head with an airhead one day. Y'all. Wait a second. That was hella funny. Wait a second. But. But so he had asked me for a new, and I, I, I was just like, man, here. It accidentally sent to my home girl, Charmin, and Charmin, <laughs> Charmin like girls, so I don't know. And Charmin was on her way to my house to pick me up because he was going to my homeboy Jerry house, right? Shout out to Jerry and Charmin. Yeah. And <laughs> she texted me and was like, "What um. the fuck?" And I was like, what is she talking about? And I was, I looked and I like ran to the living room. And at this time, my homeboy, I was with my homeboy, Anthony. And I laid out, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. He's like, what happened, you dork? I was like, yo, somehow, I, and I know for a fact, I had the screen open because I, is the iPhone. Mm-hmm. I had the dude's text thread open mm-hmm. and somehow it sent to her. And I was so embarrassed. And I just like, and I got in the car. I couldn't even say nothing. Like, what was I supposed to say? So, of course, she shows my friend Monica. And Monica was like, dude, that was a terrible photo. I was like, I know. <laughs> you just sent it to Buddy, like, damn, here, stop asking uh, me. I know. And I was like, I wasn't trying, like, at all. No. And now you know what I look like naked. And my thing is like with the whole thing with with all these celebrities, y'all wouldn't give a fuck if they weren't celebrities. Yeah, I wouldn't. Y'all, it just would be somebody's news. It would be regular porn and shit. You'd be turned on, but because they're celebrities and we put these people on these pedestals in our mind because of their fame and their 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 fortune or their celebrity, um, then you care. But it's like you you wasn't gonna meet this motherfucker no way. No. And all the people that was talking shit about Nelly and his and his penis size and all of that, you still would fuck. If Nelly pulled up to you, was like, "Yo, let's go away for a weekend." Hey. You still gonna go? You still gonna fuck? He go, he, he gonna spit game because maybe he can't talk it. That's what he said, not me. But that, I'm just saying, I love none that. of that shit makes a difference. But let's just let's just stop with the bullshit, man. It's, it's, we it's, all human. Everybody got a dick or a puss. You know what I'm talking about? Here's the thing with Nelly, though. I think Nelly was trying to send it to his close friends. It's, it's possible, but still, because somebody that's still that's still risky. Because, like, think think about this. Because close friends, fuck that. My close friends, I got phone numbers. I need to send something that personal. They get text. Like, no, and that and that's the thing. Because I like, think you go to your story mm-hmm. and then you upload, but then you got it's it's multiple points. Yeah, that yeah, happen. yeah. So maybe he thought he tapped close friends, mm-hmm. but he didn't tap close friends. You hey, know what I mean? I so that's all I could think of is that that's something that probably happened. 
I mean, I'm happy it happened. <laughs> it was for my view and pleasure. <laughs> Lil Fizz, whatever that is. Hey, man, bless Lil Fizz's heart. He got an OnlyFans. He out here doing he, his thing. He, he talked too much to have a dick that looked like that. You know what? Every, every that just shows that there are a lot of it comes in a lot of different shapes and sizes and, and variations. I'm at because oh, here's the thing: there, there. I've seen a lot of different hoods. These vulvas come in a lot of different different shades and, and, and colors, and I've seen from the the, the petite lips, yeah, to the massive yeah. lips to, to the the, the, the big clitoris. Like I've seen them all. I, I saw a clip, and I was really, big foot one time, and I was really confused, mm -hmm. and I was like. Is, is that a baby? baby dick yeah. Or what well, they say when we're in, pretty, in yes, we're the might, same. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same. Much, yeah, yeah, but like, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't get. I think all vaginas beautiful. I am that nigga that loves all vagina. You got little lips. You got big lips. You got big lips. I look lips. I like all that shit. Nothing know, about. <laughs> since we're here and we're talking about, you know, penises and vaginas mm -hmm. not created equal, that's why I believe that you shouldn't go down on everybody. Oh yeah, everybody's not and, not worthy of that. And every and, and people talk about me. They're like, so you would have sex with somebody? And now, yeah, now I don't know where your mouth been. No, yeah. I don't know where your dick been. Did you wash your ass today? Can you wear white drawers confident, confidently? Let me tell you a something. Lot of niggas can't wear I can get clothes. out the shower. I'm talking about fresh out the shower, and I still ain't putting on no white drawers. It ain't got nothing to do with wiping. It's just like white drawers. You 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 can literally walk outside and you'll get the dirt from somebody else yep. on your white drawers. Like I just I don't understand people who still wear white drawers. Like that is uh this right here gets sweaty for no reason whatsoever. I, it don't matter what you do, it's still gonna be a look, it's gonna be a look, it's gonna be a little tinge of something. I'll be wearing white drawers. You wear white drawers? Wearing white drawers. Bless but you. Also, but also, but also for women. Sometimes it is a good thing, and it's sometimes it is a great thing to also not wear underwear just because sometimes your vagina does need to breathe. Yeah. So that's why, so when you wear other colors and all this stuff, those dyes can you know, say, yes, get in the, okay. your vagina, you know, because it's so sensitive. Yeah, now I get that. Yeah. I'm I'll like, be free balling. Yeah. So free the ball. In, in, in St. Louis. Eat me out. Eat me out. Eat me out. <laughs> I'm trying to make that a thing, guys. <laughs> uh, so so here's, hit, hit me out. Hit me out. Hit me out. Hit me out. So, like, my I, thing, my thing, my thing is like, instead I'm of so telling somebody to take your dick, right? You say, eat this dick, right? And so then it's like, eat me out. And that's, and that's, a, it's, it's an even playing field. Everybody can say it. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm listen, I'm going, I'm, no, no, I've been doing this for a while. I've been doing I, this. I just feel like if a guy, so. Here's the thing, cause like, all right, so <laughs> here's another thing. Isaiah Rashad on his video, he tells one of the dudes to, to eat that dick. And I was like, I've been saying that. And now they're going to think Isaiah Rashad said that first. And I've been telling Farron to eat this dick. Look, she said, she said, yeah, you have. I've been telling. So go eat this dick. is like, eat me out. And when you say it like that, eat me out. Sound dope. <laughs> Why y'all puppy look at me when, she, when he came He smelled food. Home. He looked at me like. Who was that? Yeah, 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 yeah. The other day, he barked at me. I'm like, uh, dogs be barking at me. Yeah, okay, Chris. Eat me yeah. out. <laughs> Listen, anyway, anyway. Okay, so what was some sound advice? We, we go really, we gonna get serious. We go, we go. <laughs> What's some sound advice that you could give somebody or that is looking to... Get away from that boy. <laughs> As soon as Keisha went to the bathroom, he's like, oh, yeah, my water's in there. Get your ass away from there. He ain't care he's, nothing he's about that telling water. Keisha to eat him out. <laughs> I don't think I don't think our dog is doing that. He ain't I, got no balls. Oh. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah. Anyway. Sad. Anyway, okay, so like, what's some sound advice that you were given and that you could give someone that would, that is looking to build their career and level up in life? Sound advice. Sound to hear. Just do it. I remember I called Arvin Mitchell when I was still living in Belleville. Shout out to Arvin. And I was like, yo, you know, I want to take this comedy to the next level. I don't know what to do. He was just like, just do it. Whatever you're thinking about, just do it. The worst that can happen is you can fail and you have to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody's going to beat your ass for trying. Okay. Nobody's going to walk in your mama's house and slap her for you trying. Just do it. Like, people be hitting me up all the time. 
Like, yo, I'm thinking about starting comedy. You have any words of advice, anything like that? I have no words until you start. Because the stuff that I'm going to tell you is not going to apply to you because you haven't started. So you're not going to understand what I'm saying. I have no words until you start. No advice until you start. Just do it. Get started. That that right there will make worlds of a difference. And then once you get to a certain degree, like right now, <laughs> bless her heart, my friend, uh, I just did something for my friend, and uh, they started late. Like, I was there on time. I was there 10 minutes early before we was going to start shooting, and then we were supposed to start at a certain time. We started like an hour and 15 minutes later, and I was, I was fuming. Like, I was visibly bothered by this because mm, mm. you get to a certain point when you work hard and you, you start making you know decent money you realize that well i can i can make this money i can make this money over and over and over again i can't never get none of my time back yep i would rather pay somebody to do something else for me than lose time doing something yeah. so the fact that i lost that hour and 15 just sitting around doing nothing when i could have been working i could have been making yeah. video i couldn't do anything yeah i was so pissed off plus my day was stacked so I had to move stuff around. I had to reschedule my therapy appointment, all of that type of stuff. Now, me and that person, like I told her while we were filming, I was like, just know you're out of my phone as a contact. You are just a phone number Ooh. now. And I meant that shit, like with every fiber of my being. But I'm also learning to be more fluid and be more flexible because I am I am, I am, am a stickler when it comes to time. Yes, yeah, Farron knows I will leave Farron. I, I, I will leave her. We, we, we work out in the morning, very early in the morning. And I told her, hey, I'm going to go without you. I've told her that I left my mom. We were going to church when my mom came out here, and I told her I was leaving in five minutes. Five minutes hit, she was still somewhere in the back. Left her motherfucking ass. She had to come with Farron. I don't give a fuck. I am not going to live up to the stereotype that black people are always late. I'm going to be early. So I'm a very much a stickler for that. But I'm trying to be more flexible. Okay. Because I, but I understand like time is so valuable, y'all. Yeah. That's why that's why like going back to the just do it thing, you're not gonna get that time over to start a year ago or two years ago. So if you don't just do it, a uh, year's gonna go by. You're like, fuck man, I should have started like yes, the fuck you should have. Yes, you should have started working out a year ago. Yes, you should have started that diet six months ago. Yes, you should start saving for that trip or Christmas six months ago. Just do it. You will yeah. never get that time back. And now I'm because time is so valuable to me. I'm I'm very like cognizant of how I spend my time, right. who I give it to. I don't like tons of people hit me up for a podcast. Hey, I would like to interview you, and it's like virtual. I ain't this. I had to set up lights and all this shit for. I ain't have to do none of this shit for these people. But I'm like, no, because it's not going. It's not going to be mutually beneficial. Right. Like if if it's something that I can help you and you can help me, and we can you know promote uh, cross platform promote. That's great. But if it's just one sided. And there's no incentive for me to do it, financial or, or otherwise. Why would I do that? Right. And people think you're being an asshole, but it's like, it's no, not. I'm just protecting my time. But I tell people that all the time. I was just like, but I'm that friend that will leave you. Mm -hmm. And I'm that friend that's going to dip out on you as well and not say shit. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, well, it's time for me to go to sleep. Just like I was telling y'all, like, I, I was out the other night. I was like, damn, I don't even know the last time I've been out this late because I value my time. It's yes. Like, I just don't want to do. I'm very and protective I'm of it. I am trying to get in the space of saying no more. Yes. Like, oh, no, no is a complete and sentence. It's, no. it's a I'm complete sentence. You. you know what I'm saying? And yeah. learn to say no unapologetically. Yeah. Learn to say no without explaining yourself. Because the more you do it, the more people are going to respect it. But if you always feel the need to like justify your no, then people always feel the need to try to convince you to turn that no into a yes or a yeah. maybe. But if you say no unapologetically, and that's what it is, then that's what the fuck it is. Yeah. That's real. And especially out here, no needs to be Ooh. a regular part of your, your vocabulary. Because traffic... Listen. <laughs> traffic is too retarded. Oh, I can't say that. But too crazy out here mm -hmm. for you to be wasting my time from, for me to be sitting around somewhere for an hour and a half. And you know traffic is always fucked up. Yep. That's why I don't like when people be saying, using traffic for an excuse for being late. Nigga, traffic is always fucked up. Yeah. I was coming home last night. It was 12-something. I sent Farron a video of the traffic because I didn't want her to think I was on some bullshit. The traffic was so fucked what, what up. Nigga, the, the 110. Oh, it yeah. was it, they had put it to one lane. Yep. So everybody is trying to merge over at one yep. lane. And this is like where already where the 101 is, you know, that already gets fucked yep. up. And yep. I'm just like, I can't believe this shit is at 12 something. It's already fucked. I mean, it's it's like fucked up this late at night. Yeah. But no, I, I was talking, I was like, okay, so uh, you ready? Because this traffic, I I, I hate listen. 
sitting in traffic. It drives me insane. I did that enough driving back and forth into LA to work. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. no, I that's real. That's real. And that's that that's really real. What else? What else we else? What else we talking about? Wait, when we we started at 6 30, right? Yeah, we started yeah. at 6 30. Right. What time is it? 714. Okay, we got a couple yeah. minutes. Yeah, we got a couple minutes. Yeah. Couple minutes. Yeah. So our food is here and I'm smelling that food. I see them over them over. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> nigga, hi. How long is the show? Is it 30 minutes? Is it an hour? Damn. <laughs> I think oh, no, oh, it's no, so he no. told me about this chicken breast. I was like, yeah, I've never had this days. This shit's so fire, my dude. If y'all ever come out to LA, get some, what is it, Dave's Hot Chicken? Yeah. Dave's Hot yeah. Chicken yeah. is so damn fire. Nelly's having it for the first time. It is fucking delicious. There's a lot of chicken spots in LA. Go to Dave's Hot Chicken. What's Trust your favorite, me. favorite chicken spot? <laughs> Dave's Hot Chicken? Okay. As far as that, it's like, it's like the, 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 Spicy tenders and shit like that. Days hot chicken, but the, Louisiana. I want to say at the time of this airing, mine is Louisiana. Louisiana fried I'm chicken chain, I'm is Popeyes, but Louisiana fire. Is fire. Now here's the thing: I've never seen a black person cooking the chicken at Louisiana. Nope. It's all it's Asians. Yep. And it's they called Louisiana. Fried they can fry some they chicken. chicken. And Louisiana fried chicken is um, it has a spicy batter. Yes. Now let me tell you that the first time, first couple times I had it, I didn't really notice. I was like, oh, this got a little kick to it. One time I had eight wings. I was starving. I don't give a fuck. Judge your mama. I, I had I'm eight. I'm like, Nigga, you had I had eight wings. I fucked all of them up, right? Wow. That was when I noticed that spicy batter. Cause that poop. Let me tell you something. I had to eat ice chips while I was taking the shit. That's how T M I niggas is eating, friend. Niggas is eating. They listen to us right now. <laughs> that shit changed my life. It was one of the ones where I had to take my shirt off and I was rocking oh back God. and forth while I was biting my tank top, nigga. It was <laughs> I just saw that was, meme today. Like what somebody mean? that was like holding stomach. Somebody was holding eggs on somebody. <laughs> like, nigga. It was a definite like bull shirt off. Bite the tank top, rocking back and forth. Like, fuck, I never did a great. God, if you pull me through this, I'll never do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I did. I, did. I haven't been back since that time, though. Oh, I my been, God. I How long been back. was that? Uh, around Christmas. Okay. It might have been like the day after Christmas when okay. this happened. Yeah. It was, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was some shit, though. It's so good. It's so good. I, I enjoy it too much. Okay. <laughs> so I have to ask you this. So what is, like, your ideal, like, movie cast? Like, you're, you're re, re, filming this, you starring. Who is in your movie? I would love to do a movie with my friends, honestly. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I would love some cameos from... I, I would. I, I want to do a project with Samuel L. Jackson. I don't give a fuck. Oh, yes. I just want him in I there for five minutes. Any, yes. I, I want to meet him so bad. Yes. Samuel L. Jackson. Hey, motherfucker. I would love to get a cameo with him. I would love to get a cameo from Leo. Okay. Uh, I would love to get a cameo from... Um, uh, Angela Bassett. Yeah. I would love to get a cameo from. Um... Okay, you. Sorry, I <laughs> you did. I, I didn't. Right. Um, who else? Would be... What's um, what's his name? Oh, Je- Jeffrey Wright okay. and Paul Giamatti. Okay. I would. I mean, those. You talking about range? Paul Giamatti is fucking Giamatti. fantastic. And Jerry. Not him. Huh? Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti. Well, you know to hear can't say nothing, right? Don't do my bad though. Well, I right. mean, yeah. he said it himself. So what? He can say what he wants. Hold on. You know what? Y'all know what you're not going to do. What they call you, Tom? Tell a bad. What's that? Tell a bad. 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 Get a bad. Get a bad. Get a bad. My baby take enough for me. Be a Bond girl. Oh, James Bond? Yeah, I would be a Bond girl. That's all I can say. That I, I want like, maybe if Idris Elba is the lead. Mm-hmm. Then you you know. got the legs, but Dom got legs for days, guys. Dom's legs are four feet by them damn self. She has a small torso. Yeah. She got four feet legs. I I'm looking, I, I bought an outfit the other day for my birthday trip, y'all, because my birthday is Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm about to kill. Her. I was like, oh, I'm gonna look fluffy in it. <laughs> hey, Dom is built like a Barbie doll. I'm, a, I'm like, I'm about to be stuck in these swimsuits that I bought, like, for my trip. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to pull out some old swimsuits. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. Y'all don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to pull out some old swimsuits. Hey, it's gonna be fine. You're gonna, yeah. have, you're gonna have a great birthday. I, I would do that, but then I was like, I was saying, like, with all the transition that's happening. Like the perfect show 
would be kind of centered around like it would be sisters mm-hmm. and one is divorced and it's re-entering the date the dating world whereas the other sister kind of has already been there and that's like this is 40 right what is that wasn't that the movie what? this is 40 this no. was that was like the that was like the the sequel to uh the seth rogan movie and old girl like a continuation of no, no, not I love you, man. It was supposed to be the one where See, Seth, so Seth Rogen to... uh, had got the chick pregnant, exist, yeah. the, oh, knocked up. Knocked up. It was oh, supposed okay. to be. I thought the the the, the yeah, 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 yeah. With Eric Bana. Mm-hmm. No, that was funny people. See, it don't exist. Okay, fine. It don't exist. Fine, it don't exist. Yeah, they said. Yeah, they said. It don't exist. Oh yeah, no, I'm 25. MTM. Why you you, you here? You ain't got nothing else to do but roast. Take notes, nigga. I'm I'm trying to give you. He's he, all he doing is roasting to hear lactating to hear built like Mr. Potato Head. He do that all the time. That's all he do. He ain't got nothing else to do. He just it, it be too. He one of those people that don't like when the chat gets quiet. You know people that don't like when it's quiet. And they got to yeah. just say something. So he you know, just. Ty Davis is a good one. Oh. She gonna block you. Oh yeah, Ty Davis. Right, Get your ass out of no, here. No. Somebody said to Ty the other day, uh, "Hey, you know smoking bathroom." She said, "Hold on, dumb motherfucker." Everybody knows I smoke. Do I know that it's bad for me? Yes. Do I give a fuck? No. I was hollering. But the other day when I was on live with with you, uh-huh. somebody was like, "Hey, Dom, what's going on with your hair?" I went, I couldn't swallow getting it. Fuck you. Know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I but you know what? Hurt, but. Here's the thing. Um, people see you and they only see you in your made up life. Yeah. So when you have an off day, people are like, oh, what's going on? You all right? Motherfucker, yes. It's and just Tuesday. Like, I just got my hair done. I said, what do you mean? What's wrong with it? What's going, what's going on? It's, it's something not right. I mean, I know my forehead big for shit. <laughs> okay, so okay. what's the most annoying thing? Um, because I feel like there has to be some sort of boundary. And I don't think that sometimes when you have a fan base, I don't think they understand that. And so they expect you to be on like 10 all the time. You really operate in like a three or a four. I know my, so my, my, my people, people, my tribe, my village knows. I am, I am very thankful for the support. Mm-hmm. And if you see me out, I would be very grateful that you reached out to me and you spoke and we take a picture and all of that. But like, also don't get too familiar. Yeah. Because you know of me. I, you're a stranger to me. Yeah. In the sense of like meeting, we may have just met. You know a lot about my life. You know yeah. me. You know the kid. You know my wife. You know the podcast. You know the people I fuck with. But I don't know anything about you. So always keep that in mind when yes. you're meeting us. It's like, I'm very excited that you're excited. I'm very excited that you support me. But at the same time, I don't know you. Yeah. And so like most of the people watch me, they know what boundaries I've set and, and what to say and what to do. Yeah. But like, also like, I mean, just common sense for the most part. Like, that's all it takes is common sense and decency. A lot of people don't when you, that, I know common sense ain't common. Yeah. But if you if you move with that energy, you don't get that from me. If you come at me on some sideways shit, I don't give a fuck about any of these subscribers and any of these platforms I'm on. I'm going to meet you. I'm going <laughs> to fucking meet you there. And that, that, that goes for people, and that goes for yeah. celebrities, too. Y'all heard the story about Tommy Davidson? I don't give no fuck. I don't fuck with that nigga. Yo, I was watching uh, Guy's uh, show the other day, and when they showed Tommy Davidson, I was just, I looked at him and just started cracking up. Listen, Tony Baker and Brandon Lewis, they got a picture with Tommy Davidson on their page. I text these niggas immediately. Damn, you fucking with the ops? <laughs> Tony was like, yo, you wait, see wait. where I'm at? I'm way in the back, though. I'm way in the back. Yes. Give him just a super quick Tommy Davidson story. Tommy Davidson. Tommy Davidson said some fucked up shit to me one time. Now here's the thing. Honestly, I should let it go. I really could because the next time I saw him, he tried to squash it. But I'm a nigga, and I hold on to growth. I hold on to shit like piss on a road trip. You understand me? And I held on to that shit. This has been years. I'm talking about this was what 2018 when it made it happen. I was still working for all day 2017, 2018, and I'm still holding on to it because I'm a nigga, right? And then we saw him in the airport one time, and Tony spoke to him. It was me, Tony, Kev, Josh. We were on tour, and Tony spoke to him. And Kev thought I was going to not be me. He's like, hey, here, look, Tommy Davidson. I was like, I don't fuck with that nigga. <laughs> Loud in the airport. He heard it. I made it awkward for everybody. Now, again, in reality, I should let it go. And really, honestly, 
I really ain't got no problem with him at this point. Okay. It was just standing on principle because the way he came at me the first time. But like I said, he honestly did try to squash it. And I said for 2022, I was leaving with love. And for the most part, I forgot to tell you, I talked to uh, yesterday too. Uh-huh. So squash. Okay. Because I'm really trying to, I'm really trying to better that. So okay. I take it back. It's not fuck Tommy Davidson. I respect Tommy Davidson for what he did for comedy. Um, it's hilarious. You see them on Woo. You see them on Booty Call. You see them on In Living Color. The motherfucker's funny. You see, one of my favorite Tommy Davidson roles is in Black Dynamite. He wasn't even in that long. He was cream corn. And it's like, I'm cream corn. I'm running things. And then when Black Dynamite comes in and chases him, he chases him to a fucking roof. He said, who the fuck says this when they get chased? He's like, let me catch my breath, that Black Dynamite. <laughs> and I couldn't say that shit for so long, but that was one of my favorite fucking parts of the, of the movie. But I ain't got no problem with Tommy Davidson, man. I was holding on to some shit, and that was very immature of me. It was very unreasonable of me. So I'm saying it on Dom Show, Whiskey Sour. I ain't got a problem with TD. Gross. But it was funny as Gross. Well, That's what we call it. Yeah. <laughs> it was. You know what that is, bitch? Gross. Gross. Shout out to Natasha. She is hilarious. Oh, I love her. Such yeah. a sweetie. Yes. Yeah. Such a sweetheart. Yeah. But to hear, we're both hungry. Yes. I had, yeah. I had another question for you super quick and me laughing, I forgot. Oh, uh, what does I mean? Think of it real quick. I can't, I can't even think. Like I can't I can't even think. That's it. <laughs> um who was that? Y'all, y'all and also y'all be sure y'all follow to hear and everybody and support. Nah, fuck that. Follow fair. Y'all already okay. fucking with me if y'all watching right now. Shout out to the scary squad. Shout out to the more mob. Y'all already fuck with me. Follow fair. If we can get fair. As close or two sixty thousand followers as possible. I said sixty thousand. It's always been sixty thousand. Oh, I put. I said sixty thousand. Hey, I'll take the fifty. I'll take the sixty. Subscribe to my YouTube. <laughs> and we get all right. Fifty thousand. We get fair and as close as possible. Fifty thousand. I'll retire her so she can focus on the brand. And what we building over here? So that's that's the goal to get fair to fifty thousand dollars. We're gonna fight. Let's get me there, okay? I got dreams and goals like the two. We winning. We putting on for the city. Anyway, man, I fuck. <laughs> I fuck with y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all for watching, Thank man. You. I'm you. signing off like it's my goddamn show. I'm sorry. Do your thing. I know you are. But- I tried to say bye, and then it was like I said. Anyway, y'all. Thank y'all. Like, subscribe, share. We got the candles. Uh, same dash angels. Oh yeah, candles. The candles uh, and the and the and the uh, candle burn the wax too for the candle the burn. Wax, wax burn. Yes. Uh, it's just fire. I have been working diligently, y'all. Let me quit my nine to five. <laughs> Please help me. Okay. Some of us have dream goals and ambitions, and we just want to be creative all the time. I will say, to hear has encouraged me to start. Yes, and Keisha. I was like, I'm out of work clothes. I'm not squeezing into these goddamn express flags from 2004 no more. I didn't pop my button that was dead. Yes. HR coming over. Yes. See? I just emailed Chris Park this morning. They called me today like, man, this is Chris Park when Dave was on my heart. I I don't know if y'all were able to hear Keisha's rant, but it was hilarious, but. You gonna start well, seeing a, more, a lot more of everybody. Yes. So, uh, yes. thank y'all so much for watching. Thank you. More miles, Kids Squad. I love y'all. Fuck with y'all all day thank long. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I love y'all. Thank y'all for selling out my first drop too, because the majority of my, I told you, my business came from the more mob. Y'all are like the, the I have the best support y'all, system really in the do. fucking world. Yeah, you really, really do. And in the I fucking world. That's why I'm sending y'all some more stuff. We still got, we got more uh, clap cleats coming in. Y'all saw the video I did for Buddy. We got a partnership going. So as soon as these clap please come in, we're gonna I'm start sending them out. And we also uh working on some more partnerships. So when anytime I get something free and I get it in access, I'm sending that shit to y'all. Y'all know that. Like I, I don't need all this shit. I'll share it with my people. So there it is. Yes. Thank y'all so much. And y'all might see some special Patreon content for me. I talked to you here at dinner the other day. I'm gonna do that shit. Shout out to Diana G. I'm glad to see you back. Uh, you know, you know what I'm saying. So uh, talk to y'all in a minute, man. We finna eat. Thank you. I'm hungry. All right. Peace. (laughs) Slide over. Yeah, yeah. You already know how it go. Boom. Bow.